Welcome to the Friday Casebook with Roger Casale, the founder of the civil rights organization New Europeans. I'm Lena, a freelance journalist and moderator, and I want to know, Roger, who or what is the elephant in the room this week? Hi, Lena. Well, I think it's a what this week, and it's everybody's desperation to go somewhere. Uh, to get away from lockdown. Believe it or not, some people are using the lockdown to make plans for cities on Mars, five cities on Mars, capital city Nuva. There's a picture of Nuva. Um, I think one of the things that makes it less attractive uh, to me is that it looks as if they've got those two buildings outside Nuva look like outside toilets. You remember early cities had uh, outside toilets. <laughs> I think that would be out, make it less attractive. Um, I think that's the only thing you're, you are allowed to leave Nuba for. Uh, quite a fun game is to pick who you would send there first. And I know the British are keen to uh, decide whether it should be Boris Johnson or the Home Secretary Priti Patel. Perhaps they'll have a referendum to decide who they would send there first. Of course, one of the attractions to Priti Patel, life on Mars, would be there's absolutely no danger of any migrants or refugees arriving in a rubber dinghy, or even any of those pesky EU citizens that they've decided that they don't want anymore in Britain. But still, I think it's going to be a very hostile environment on Mars, even more hostile than the hostile environment in Britain. Tell me, Roger, would you like to go there? I guess it's like at least a six month ride to go to Mars from Earth. <laughs> well, I, you know, I suffer from seasickness, so I'm sure I'd suffer from uh, motion sickness having to go all the way to Mars. And unlike when you go out on a boat, you, you, you wouldn't be able to come back. You'd have to sit there in the spaceship for a long time. <laughs> so I, I, I think I'd be curious to find what life was like on Mars, but I'd be a little bit nervous about the journey. What else caught your eye? Well, back here on Earth, Lena, it seems that young people are taking over. Good for them, certainly in Europe. There's a new party, uh, not that new actually, it's been around for a couple of years, uh, which wants a little bit, a little, bring a little bit of electricity to the political scene. We've been talking about interplanetary experiences. This is the next best thing, transnational political parties. Uh, it's called Volt, V-O-L-T, like uh, volts and electricity. And they've just won three seats in the Dutch parliamentary elections. They already had a seat in the European Parliament. The lead candidate in the ne Netherlands, Lawrence Dassens. So um, Lawrence Dassens even got his name in the New York Times. So if those of you watching uh, click on the links underneath the video, you will be able to read the article in the New York Times about this exciting new political, transnational political party in Europe called Volt, which uh, now has Lawrence Dassen and two of his colleagues as MPs in the Dutch Parliament. Who's on the naughty step this week? Well, we've got... Uh, Erdogan on the naughty step this week. Uh, it's about time we had Erdogan on the naughty step this week. There's so many reasons we could put him on the naughty step. The reason we've got him on the naughty step this week is that he's just pulled out of the Istanbul Convention, which was the Council of Europe Convention uh, designed to uh, stop violence against women. There is Erdogan talking to his daughter, Sulemi, who is in fact the vice president of quite a conservative association of Muslim women in Turkey, which nevertheless is very much in favor of the Istanbul Convention. Um, so presumably he's explaining to her why it is that um, you know, men are different to women and, and how it is that, how it came to be that men are better than women and why it is that he's pulling out of the Istanbul Convention. It's an encouragement in Turkey to men who want to commit violence against women. And within four hours of him withdrawing from the Istanbul Convention, six women had been murdered, four of them by their partners. And since he came to power in 2002, over 6,000 women, I think it's 6,372 women have been murdered. The Istanbul Convention was designed to introduce legally binding measures to also to monitor violence against women and to take measures to, to protect women and to stamp out violence against women. 
it's very strange to have a, a convention like that, an international convention, and then turn around and uh, withdraw it. So I think it makes it easy easy to keep him on the naughty step this week. The Istanbul Convention uh, will sadly no longer protect women in Istanbul or in Turkey itself. Uh, but it, it, it is an international treaty promoted by the Council of Europe and we must work to persuade the Council of Europe to take whatever action they can to try and get Turkey to return to the convention. Who's our star of the week? Well, our star of the week is Virginia Fiume, who is the mercurial figure uh, driving forward an initiative called uh, Humans, E-U-M-A-N-S, Uh, in Italy, but it's very active all over Europe. And we work closely with Virginia and with Marco Capato, a former MEP from Humans, and Monica Frassoni, the former leader of the Greens in Europe, who's also part of the initiative. And they are promoting a European citizens initiative to introduce carbon pricing as a measure to stop global warming. And on the 9th of May, they'll be organizing a grand signing day, not just of their European citizens initiatives, but all European citizens initiatives to mobilize uh, energy. So she's an inspiring figure working at the grassroots, really uh, helping to mobilize European public behind this European citizens initiative to introduce uh, carbon pricing to stop climate change. So Virginia Fumi is our star of the week. What's coming up? Well, next week we have the uh, last in our series three of the Tuesday Conversations. So it's an opportunity for me to say thank you to Paul Henningsen, who's been the moderator of this series. Uh, it's been great fun, these Tuesday Conversations, getting people together from different parts of Europe to have conversations about everyday things. Uh, next week, Paul will be asking the question, what's top of your list for when we can finally travel again after lockdown? So we'll be interested to see what everybody says. I wonder if anyone will say Mars. So next Tuesday, 7 p.m. Next Tuesday, 7 p.m. on Facebook Live, New Europeans News. Thank you very much, Roger, for your insights. And you all, please don't forget to subscribe to our New Europeans YouTube channel. And yeah, see you next week. Thanks very much indeed, Lynn. See you next week, everyone.